YouTube. All right, this video is on disobeying God, right? Disobeying, for those, those of y'all who might not know what like disobeying God means is when God tells us something and we don't want to do it. So instead of doing it his way, we just do what we want to do. Like God says, do this. And we like, nah, nah, I, I'm going to do what I want to do. All right. So I want to talk about Jonah. It's a lot of y'all may know like Jonah in the whale, right? But I'm going to talk about the first part of the, the story with Jonah when uh, Jonah ran from the Lord, right? And he just blatantly disobeyed God. And um, if some of y'all who may not know who Jonah is, Jonah was a prophet. You know, and a prophet is somebody who the Lord speaks. They have the gift of prophecy, which means God speaks directly through them. Like they can relate God. They have a, such a close relationship with God or they have the gift to hear God clearly and to relate it to others. Right. So let me kind of give you an overview of what happened. So um, Jonah was a prophet from the Lord and there was a, it was a city or a, a, a land, right? A tribe of people called Nineveh. And Nineveh was, they was cutting up. I mean, Nineveh was, they was, they was doing some sick things, right? And they were not pleasing to the Lord. Like the way they was living, how they was getting down in the city of Nineveh, they was, I mean, they was just, they just wasn't right. And, but the Lord wanted them to, God loved them so much. This wicked city, Nineveh, God loved them so much where God wanted to, um, God wanted them to repent of their sins and turn their way and change, have a heart transformation of the people of Nineveh. So, you know, so they can get in, you know, so they could live righteously because God did not approve what they did. But Jonah was a prophet from the Lord and Jonah didn't like Nineveh. Like Jonah had beef with Nineveh. Jonah didn't like Nineveh. Jonah didn't like the people of Nineveh. Those were his enemy. Those were his ops. He ain't, he wasn't feeling the people of Nineveh. But what God told Jonah is God said, all right, that's what I want you to do. I want you to go preach to the people in Nineveh. I want you to go there for 40 days and talk to them. And I want you to preach to them what I'm telling you to, to speak because I want these, I, I, I need this, I need this land of people to change, right? Because if they don't change, I'm going I'm to I'm punish them. But I love, I love the people in Nineveh. So I want to, I want to, you know, I want to change these people. But Jonah wasn't feeling that. Jonah wasn't hearing that. So when the God told Jonah this, he just blatantly just ran away. Like he ran away. God said, go to Nineveh. And Jonah went this way. <laughs> like Jonah just completely obeyed God. He actually, he hopped in a boat. Jonah, when he when God told him this, Jonah hopped in a boat and he like he just hopped in a boat and with some other sailors and like, look, I'm going elsewhere. Because I'm not going to Nineveh. And what God did was, God was like, okay. I told you to go this way, and you want that way, and you want to hop in a boat in the sea. I, I got something for that. I'm finna send a, I'm finna send a storm on you, like this huge storm. While you in that boat, I'm gonna cause this huge storm to call. I, I cause this huge storm, and I'm gonna rock the boat, and the storm gonna be so bad. Well, it's about to tear this boat apart, and you finna like you finna you finna die. And that's this first part of you know the story of Jonah. Before we carry on, but. Uh, I, I just want to talk. I just want to stop right there because there's two reasons why he disobeyed God, why we disobey God, and the two reasons why we oftentimes are like Jonah and we disobey God for two reasons. Number one is fear, and the second is pride. Fear and pride are the two things that keep us from obeying God, right? And like, I'm, I'm gonna start with fear. With when God tells us to do something we're fearful of the outcome, right? So the enemy is able to put fear in our hearts to keep us from doing God's plan, right? Like for example, God tells you to quit your job and start your start a business. You're like, wait, God, what? God, you want me to quit my job? God, like, God, this is how I feed my, this is how I pay the bills. God, this is how I feed my family. God, this is how, I mean, God, I, I want to start this business, but God, I'm scared. Like, I, I can't do that. Or God tells you to get out of that long-term relationship, this, that long, long-term relationship that you've been in, and be single. You're like, whoa, hold up, God. Like, I know, uh, God, I know you might not want us together, but God, like, I love this person, and we got so much time together, and God, I'm so scared of being alone, God, and this person knows me, and I trust this person, and, and if I leave, I don't, I, I, like, I don't know what I'm going to do without them. So you stay. Right? So you stay on that job, right? 
and there's repercussions. Oh, I have an even better one for you, and I'm guilty of this. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go to that later. But the enemy is able to put fear in our hearts because God, because God knows that the devil knows that God has a plan for us, right? The devil knows that God has a plan for us, right, to prosper us, <laughs> and so. If God tells us to take the leap of faith, right, or to go left, the enemy, God knows what's ahead of us. And the enemy knows what God has planned for us. But we don't know what God has stuff for us. All that we know, all that we can see in our human eyes is what that God's saying, take this leap. And you, we look at the leap like, I don't, I don't know, God, I'm scared. I don't think I could do that one, right? So we just we decide to like you know what I'm I'm just not gonna do it. I'm too afraid to take this leap of faith. I'm too afraid to to listen to God because like I I God I, I can't let this go like or what's what what you saying to do it, it's too scary like it's it's too risky and I, I I don't know if I could do that. And the second reason. Like I said, the second reason that keeps us away from following the will of God is just the second reason that why we disobey God is out of pride. We are prideful people, right? We are prideful people. Just like Jonah. Jonah was prideful of Nineveh. Like I said, he was prideful. So he didn't like Nineveh, right? And he wanted, like God wanted to change the people of Nineveh, right? He wanted to do a work in these people and he needed Jonah to do it. But Jonah was like, no, God, I know your passion. I know you're loving. So God, I don't want these people to change. I want these people to stay the same because I want all the punishment and all the, the, the chaos that you, you can cause to these people. If they don't change, I want them to have it. So I'm not going to go, right? That's a lot of times we're, we're and we do the same thing because we're prideful. We're so prideful, like for example, everybody got somebody who we don't, we're not on the best of terms with, right? And I, for myself, there's been many times where God has told me, hey, reach out to that person. Hey, forgive that person. And I'm like, no. Like, God, do you know what they did to me? God, like, do you, do you see what they did? A guy like, when I was, when we were cool, like, God, like, you see all the, the chaos and mess and you see, like, God, you see how they did me. I'm not going over to them. No, I'm not forgiving them. I don't want nothing to do with them, right? So I won't do it. I just blatantly disobey God. And God made, there's been times where God has given me multiple opportunities to forgive a person and I will not do it. And that has caused me because like, just like, just like Jonah, when God caused that storm to happen, right? There's repercussions for his disobeying. There's been repercussions for me not disobeying God due to pride, just like it was for Jonah. There's been times where God has given me ample opportunities to forgive a person, to reach out to a person, to mend things. And I would say no for so long to where God's like, okay, there will be a, there will be, there will be a situation that comes up where I need a favor or I need someone's help in a certain situation, or I need a connection for something for this particular reason. And I'm like, hmm, okay. And I go to thinking, I'm like, hmm, who could I reach out to who, who's, who knows about, who could I reach out to to help me with what I got going on? And I sit and think, and I'm like, dang, I don't, I don't know nobody. And then it hit me, I'm like, dang. The one person who I know that can help me with this is the person I got to him to forgive. Now I'm sitting there in, in a place of need, right? But now I can't go to him because one, we're not on good terms. And two, even if I try to mend things, I can't try to mend things and then be like, hey, could you help me with something? They're gonna be like, no, like what? And it was disingenuous. Like, how you gonna, how you gonna, we just, we, how you gonna try to mend things with me, then ask me for a favor? And I'm like, you didn't wanna want to mend things with me. You didn't wanna, you know, forgive me. You just, you just using me. You used me for something. And I'm like, I can't even, you know what I'm saying? I can't even talk to this person. I can't, I can't even, I can't even have this person help me with what I need because all the times where God told, God told me to reach out to this person, or forgive this person, I didn't do it. Right, and those are the repercussions that follow come with 
not obeying what God tells us to do, right? There's been, oh man, there, there has been times where like, even with football, right? Like, I, there, like for example, there will be times where coach may needs me to do something, right? And it may be something that I don't, I'm not used to, or being in a role that I don't like, that's, like, I feel like it's beneath me. And what happens is, I may, I may like not do it. And it's like, okay, All right? So the, the guy who, the guy who, that coach remembers that, and the guy that, that, you know, who, who accepted that role, right? The person who accepted that role, you know, they wind up maybe not maybe flourishing that role or that coach wind up looking out for them and helping them thrive in what they do. And I'm just sitting over there looking like this. Like that could have been me. And I just hear a guy like, that's what I, I had planned for you. Right? Like I wanted to do that within you because but because you were prideful and you felt like that was beneath you, you didn't want to do what I said. So I'm just gonna wrap this video up saying that like God knows best because he's the creator in the, of the universe and he knows all things. And God knows best. And God sees down the road what we don't see. And God has a plan for things. And he has a perfect plan. But when we say that we know better than God or we don't want to do what God wants to do, he's like, okay. And we're going to end up just like Jonah ended up in a storm of chaos like he was, you know, finna lose his life. He got thrown all into the water, the boat, right, about to break because of what he disobeyed God. And that that wasn't in God's plan, that wasn't his will. Now he gotta give us repercussions because he didn't obey, right? And for those of you who God may be telling you something, right? And you're fearful to do it because it looks risky, it looks scary, trust God because God always provides. So if God tells you, to, like, if God tells you to, to go down this road, if God tells you to do something, I don't care how bumpy this road looks, I don't care how scary it looks, I don't care how long the road looks, God will provide along the road. And all the things that you're fearful of, to, to all the things that you're fearful of to, to follow God's plan, I promise you, He is there with you throughout that. So. Always obey God, trust God, follow his will, grow closer to God so you can find out his will because when we are not in God's will for our life, we kind of, we receive those repercussions and chaos and all of these bumps along the way. So put your pride aside. Don't be afraid to follow God's will. I love y'all.